Oh, how are you doing, everyone? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry not to be there, but I'm involved in a local event this weekend here in the northwest of Ireland where I live. Uh, but I spent a couple of interesting weeks in Iran, an uh, ancient mud city called Yads, uh, which is in central Iran in April. Uh, so that uh, trip resulted from an email I received from a professor, Ali Ansari, and he teaches restoration and conservation of mud buildings in a university there. So he was inquiring if I could accept an invitation uh, to come to his country. He'd come across me on the internet with the search phrase, mud building restoration. Uh, so we found an article I had co-authored in an Australian magazine on a mud building restoration there. So this led him to my website and some of my ideas about living architecture and shelter making, which inspired the invitation. The experience of Iran was remarkable, I, to say the least. From the moment I arrived, at Ali's traditional mud house, now restored and functioning as an eco lodge, I enjoyed a constant feast of delicious mud <laughs> buildings. Uh, the city of Yaz is located close to the ancient Spice and Silk Roads and is renowned as a center of Islamic art and learning. It's nicknamed the city of wind catchers and of bicycles and it has its own unique earthen architecture, which is built wholly of mud and laid out in a maze of narrow alleys. It's believed to be the world's largest inhabited mud city, the core of which has escaped the modernization that has destroyed many traditional earth built towns in that region. It's listed as an Iranian national monument since 2005 and in 2017, 200 hectares of the city's 2,270 hectare historical mud-built area was granted UNESCO World Heritage status. Now, immersion in this rich built environment felt like the future, even though my brain was telling me it was the past. But this juxtaposition of past present and future really was the recurring theme of the trip. Originally known as Persia, Iranian history stretches back to the 6th century BC when its empire, larger than any previous empire, extended as far east as the Indus Valley. Today, Iran is portrayed as a rogue state. My experience there, however, revealed a friendly, welcoming, humorous, industrious, well-educated, peaceful, techno-savvy, if somewhat frustrated populace. Starved of viable connections into the wider world due to international sanctions and differences with its neighbors, as a Westerner, my presence was warmly welcomed and my advice constantly sought in respect of my ideas regarding architecture and my knowledge of mud building. So these experiences prompted Ali and myself to consider initiating a cultural exchange between Yad's Ibuki members and other interested mud building practitioners. And we summarized then the specific needs that exist in Yad's that such a cultural exchange could address uh, detailing uh, the Western experience of uh, mud building, providing information on the role of modern technology in earth building and in the protection of earth buildings from damage, especially from water damage, then advising how best to encourage protection of earth buildings and the repurposing of these by their owners. Uh, so the other side of such an exchange 
uh, would provide visitors with really an unrivaled opportunity to engage really with an entire city built of mud and with people who are passionate about conserving this beautiful heritage and returning it to practical uh, use. Uh, now, Yads is easy enough to get to. One can fly from London to Tehran and from there to Yads with food and shelter available at Ali's Eco Lodge. Uh, the Iranian currency then, it's pretty much worthless in respect of the euro or pound sterling. Uh, so that means the purchasing power for visitors is quite enormous. The other side of this, of course, is that the Iranians cannot afford to pay us to go there. So I funded uh, my own trip and never for a moment did I regret this investment. I'd say the experience simply can't be assigned the monetary value. Now, given the specific needs there and the UNESCO designation, along with the involvement of the local universities, I think it's possible to apply for grant aid for a seven or eight day trip there, say next October. So if you're interested in exploring that uh, possibility, I suggest you get in touch with me and we'll take it uh, from there. Send an email to peter at sheltermaker.com and yeah, I look forward to hearing uh, from you. So best wishes and thank you for listening.